Most of my videos are about UK native wildlife, something that you might be able to see in your own garden or a local park or green space as long as you live in roughly the same area as I do. But today I want to look at something a little bit more exotic. I want to show you how with the aid of a bracelet like this and an app on my phone I can track wildlife all across the world. But how does that work? Well let's go inside and let's talk about it. Okay, so what am I talking about? How does a bracelet track an animal all across the world? Well, okay, so the bracelet itself doesn't actually do anything other than look good. Uh, but Farlo have created these bracelets in partnership with non-profit organisations, and each bracelet comes with a real animal to track. So what do I mean by an individual animal to track? Well, for example, this bracelet being a sea turtle bracelet comes with a card about sea turtles. And not just any sea turtle, not just a general information about sea turtle, but a sea turtle named Coral. Now this coral, it tells you a little bit about her, is an unusual sea turtle. Uh, researchers believe that she's an adult female loggerhead hawksbill hybrid sea turtle. And it tells you a little bit about where she was released and how big she is, that sort of thing. But not only that, but it has a QR code right in the corner here on this card. And if you scan that on your phone, it takes you to the Farlow app, which will give you even more details about this animal. And that's what I want to take a close look at today. Coral is interesting as she is believed to be a hybrid of two species of sea turtle, the loggerhead and the hawksbill. Sea turtles are the living representatives of a group of reptiles that have been swimming in our seas for the last 100 million years. But today the loggerhead is listed as vulnerable and hawksbill as critically endangered. Loggerhead turtles are known for their large heads and powerful jaws, which they use to crush hard shelled prey like clams and sea urchins. They are one of the most common turtles in the Mediterranean, and they nest on the beaches from Greece and Turkey to Israel and Libya. However, it's these nesting sites that are under threat from tourism developments, and along with a serious problem of these turtles being caught up as bycatch in fishing gear, that's putting these turtles at risk. Loggerhead turtles carry colonies of plants and animals on their shells. As many as a hundred species of animals and plants have been recorded living on one single loggerhead turtle. Hawksbill turtles have a distinctive pattern of overlapping scales on their shells that give the edges a serrated look. Unfortunately, these shells are highly sought after and sold as tortoiseshell jewellery and ornaments. Hawksbill turtles have narrow pointed beak which they use to extract sponges from the preferred habitat of coral reefs in tropical oceans. They will also eat sea anemones and jellyfish. They are a fundamental link in marine ecosystems and help maintain the health of coral reefs and seagrass beds. Another bracelet I have is for Jenga, the African elephant. African elephants are the largest animals currently walking the earth and can weigh around 6 tons. Their herds can wander through 37 countries in Africa, however Jenga is from Kenya. There are two species of African elephant, the savanna and the forest elephant. The savanna is the larger and more numerous of the two, with only around one quarter to one third of the total African elephant population being made up of forest elephants. Although my information card doesn't specify which species Jenga belongs to, I am taking a guess that he's a savanna elephant due to the shape of his tusks. Savanna elephants' tusks curve outwards, whereas the forest elephants are straighter and point downwards. African elephants are considered at heavy risk of extinction, with a population of only around 415,000 in the wild. Habitat loss and fragmentation and, of course, poaching contributing to their decline. So I've just opened up my app and you can see it takes you to the world map and you can kind of scroll around on the map and we can see that he has the elephant that we've got and also if we go over to where, where Florida is it has the, tea, the, the sea turtle. So this example if we zoom in on the turtle you can zoom in right in and it'll show you where the turtle is. Okay so we can click on onto coral and this shows you the picture of coral you can see there with the uh, the a tag on her on her shell and if we view Coral's journey it then takes you back to the map and actually shows you the track that she has taken and you can click on any of these points to see at what date the they were taken. <clears throat> we'll just let it load in for a bit. So last location on the April 30th we can uh, zoom in and have a closer look. Well actually let's start from the beginning so we can see that um, we can zoom in a bit on the coast of Florida here and if we click on the point there, so that's the release site, and she was released the July 27th at 18.20pm. 
Uh, it doesn't tell you what year, unfortunately, but uh, we, can, we can guess it's probably reasonably recent, probably last year. And you can actually follow her track there, so you can just pick out another point, and it will tell you that that particular point was taken on August the 24th at 9.28am. Uh, so we can actually zoom out a little bit, we can go find where she is right now. So we can see here that this is her current location, and you know all these sort of points here are all going to be fairly recent. We can just see how long she spent uh, swimming around this part of the, the ocean. Here. So this is where it shows I've got the two animals. I've got Coral the Turtle and Jenga the Elephant. So if we click on Jenga, we can have a closer look at Jenga's journey. <laughs> so one of the points that, that when I started talking to people about this, one of the first things people said to me is, well, can, can poachers use this data to track the, an, an elephant, for example, and poach the elephant? So for the elephant in particular, we can see this is a bit different from uh, from coral. Uh, Jenga's uh, tracking data is actually delayed, so we don't actually know um, where she is right now. But you see, the most recent location was tracked on December the 29th. So now coming up to May, so we are several months delayed. Uh, so that kind of maybe put people's fears at rest that poachers aren't going to be able to use this data. This is months old data. Um, so we can actually sort of see, there's one thing that really interests me here is we can see where she was, um, fur, or he, is it? Bull elephant, right? This one's a bull elephant, so he. Uh, he was uh, released uh, or tagged on July the 1st. And we can see, if we zoom out a little bit, you can just kind of see this is in Kenya. So July the 1st was when he was first tagged. And we can see he spent some time kind of wandering around this kind of area. And if we can see if we can get the right point. So sometime around August time, he started making a journey northwards. So I'm not sure whether the tag just didn't pick it up. So I don't think he's made that entire journey in one day. So that was August. And then we come up to... August the 17th, so it's actually not that far off. What was it, August the 14th, was it? Yeah, August 14th. So he, that's a, a massive journey for, what, three days? And then spent some time wandering around this kind of uh, area. And um, I find it so interesting about the, the... You can really see how far they actually wander. And then last location, December the 29th. Um, I'm assuming it is last year. So why are we doing this? Well, apart from the fact that it's fascinating to see where these animals are in the world and to be able to track their migration patterns, uh, a certain percentage of the sales of these bracelets go towards the charities who are looking after these animals. So for example, we get the cards back, the, uh, the sea turtle, uh, every time you buy a sea turtle bracelet, a percentage of that sale will go towards the sea turtle conservancy, who are the ones who are tracking these uh, these uh, animals. And uh, also, if you were to buy the other ones, which like the elephant one is the other one I've got, uh, will go the money will go to save the elephants. Uh, so it's well worthwhile buying one of these. So I have, as I said, the sea turtle bracelet. I've also got an elephant bracelet. Uh, they also do penguins, sharks, and polar bears. And each bracelet comes in multiple different colours that you can choose. Uh, I've just gone for the, the green one in the sea turtle and a kind of a, an icy blue one for the elephant. But there's way more to choose from uh, from each uh, animal as well. Uh, so if you want to pick up one of these for yourself, you can use my code GREGWILE20 or follow the link down in the description and you can get yourself a 20% discount off them and every sale of the bracelet helps me out a little bit as well. Uh, so I'd much appreciate if you do check them out and uh, let me know what animal uh, you'd like to go for. So I just want to finish off this video by thanking Philo for sending me these bracelets to be able to show you and for uh, taking me on as a brand ambassador for them. And uh, I will be uh, bringing you more updates about them in the future should I ever get some. So thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed taking a look at some of these more exotic animals, sort, sort, sort of things you would find in the UK. And uh, pretty soon we'll go back to our regular programming of UK native wildlife. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.